Hello. So uh, today's a fun day because uh, I get to start a brand new project. I always kind of cherish uh, this phase because new projects are always full of optimistic uh, intentions and and uh, possibilities. And um, yeah, so I've been looking for an excuse to get into uh, UI programming in Rust. Um, I think probably a really common thing for, for Rust programs is to be uh, like based in a terminal or um, you know some kind of a service or, or, or something like that. Something that runs in the background doesn't really have a UI uh, other than maybe a command line interface. So um, there's a little, little preamble here. So there's um, this uh, UI library, which is meant to be uh, used for building interfaces for uh, debug tools overlaid on top of um, like game engine code. Um, and uh, it's, it's colloquially known as Dear I Am GUI. Uh, as a as a guy that has historically done just a ton of web development, I always read this in my head as image UI, but it's it's not. It's I am GUI graphical user interface. The I am is immediate mode, uh, as is kind of mentioned right here. So this library is a C plus plus library. Um, which uh, some some good souls have stripped down uh, to a C compatible layer, which has then been uh, wrapped in a Rust uh, binding. So this is kind of what I'm going to be working with. Um, but I just wanted to briefly touch on, uh, I guess, um, what what the actual library is. So um, the goals were all about, you know, being lightweight, being self-contained, not having a ton of dependencies so that you could mix it in with uh, a bunch of proprietary rendering code, uh, like a game engine. Um, and this is sort of like the gist of what the interface uh, presentation looks like. Um, so they've got a bunch of different input types. They've got a bunch of different ways for displaying data. Um, and uh, there's a little discussion here about what immediate mode rendering means. Um, basically, if you've done uh, UI programming, um, I think it's, it's really common for frameworks to uh, have a lot of state management built into them. Um, so like being able to connect, uh, different, uh, different UI elements together, um, like with QT, uh, you connect this stuff together using a, a concept called signals and slots, um, with, uh, with Java effects, which is what I kind of have the most experience with at this point. Um, you're using... Uh, an eventing model that's kind of similar to uh, to what you might see in the browser. Um, so the scene graph, like you emit uh, an event from uh, from a control, and uh, you can trap that event further up in the scene graph and then act on it somehow. Um, yeah, and so I don't know what this offers, but um, I'm assuming it doesn't offer any of that uh, since all of that requires tracking state. So I don't know. I, I have a lot of question marks about how this is meant to work. Um, but it seems cool. I love the aesthetic. Uh, and uh, since I'm interested in game development, it seems like this is a, a good library to, to play around with and see what it can do. Um, but basically what I'm saying is no promises. Uh, yeah, they have a little, uh, little screenshot gallery here. Um, uh, 
I think uh, this this basically all looks kind of like what I want. Um, and uh, this right here is a, an example of exactly what I want. So this project, I haven't talked about the project yet, but... So, uh, in an earlier stream, I was extracting my sprite library um, out of uh, Omen Labs, which is like the, the project that I use to incubate stuff. Um, so I split Omen Sprites out into its own crate, and then I published that on Crates.io. Um, and so that library is all about um, managing frame state based on time uh, for sprite animations. So like the goal there was to answer the question, uh, given a certain amount of time, which cell in the sprite sheet should be rendered. Um, and it was designed to account for different play modes. Like, so should it loop? Should it hold the last frame when it hits the end of the sequence? Um, should it ping pong? Um, all that kind of stuff. And so uh, for this project, I want to take the work that was done um, on that library and basically visualize it. So I'm, I'm planning on building a, a little window that, uh, and this is pie in the sky, kind of like what I would like. I don't think I'm gonna get there immediately, but um, what I want is to be able to like open a file browser, uh, browse to a pair of files. I want a, a file of spreadsheet metadata, and I want uh, an image which would be the texture atlas for uh, for the sprite sheet. And then I, I want to see on the side, I want to see a menu of um, clips that are, are read out of the metadata file. Um, and then I want to be able to select one and I want to be able to play it and see the animation. So it's going to be a little clip viewer. That's the concept. Um, and uh, this screenshot kind of... Uh, captures the, the spirit of what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, so uh, the reason I'm a little, oh, that's cool. There's like a little flame graph going on. Um, yeah, lots and lots of widgets, different kinds of menus some some general theming options maybe um, yeah it's all about visualizing stuff so uh, yeah so this looks like um, okay so one of the things that is a question mark for me is that they have this um, this entry in the FAQ here, how do I display an image? So that's something that I need to answer. Um, and it, they're pointing me at the CPP file, this C++ source file. Um, so I'll have to, I'll have to dig into that and see, uh, exactly what they're suggesting. Um, so that's going to take a little research. Uh, I also, mentioned just a moment ago that I wanted uh, some kind of a file browser and I see that there's a, uh, a, a ticket here on the repo. What was the final resolution? I don't know. There was a lot of discussion about how about how uh, back in 2014 there weren't any good cross-platform ways to kind of get a native file browser dialogue up. So I haven't read the entire thread. It, at least halfway through, it sounded like people were just building their own. Um, so that might be a whole little sub-project all on its own. Um, 
so yeah, two two big question marks. One is rendering images. The other is uh, how to get a file browser going. And so uh, at least while I'm prototyping, I'm going to be using uh, the the matrix of numbers uh, that I used in the Sprite Libraries uh, example program. So I'm going to start out by just hard coding the paths into my project. Um, and then I'll, I'll add the file browser in there later as I uh, as I get more familiarity or maybe never. If I uh, if I can't make it work, then I'll need to figure something else out and that's OK. But uh, yeah, so uh, as far as the rust goes, I'm going to close these out. Um, the uh, the rust bindings look like they're in pretty good shape. Um, they uh, they don't have a lot of docs, which is something I've seen time and time again on uh, on Scala projects. So there's this thing I think that happens when uh, when you're taking a source library that's written in another language and you're building bindings for it in the language you prefer. Uh, I think a lot of folks will not redocument the APIs and assume that you, your your mental uh, model is is solid enough that um, that you can make the adjustments in your head as you read the uh, the original underlying library source code or docs. I mean, it looks like uh, Dear I Am GUI itself didn't have a whole lot of docs either. Uh, it was more example programs, but so anyway, the Rust library has um, a set of examples that I've pulled down. They were in a Git submodule, which, okay, I don't know why, but uh, it was like a separate repo. Um, it seems like that wouldn't end up being very helpful if you don't redocument it. Yeah, well, I think I think the general feeling is that um, redocumenting an existing API uh, just in a new language uh, would create more opportunity for inaccuracies. Um, but I'm not sure. I, all I know is that, and this is anecdotal, but I, I see this all the time in Scala. Um, the Java interopt is so strong that, uh, and actually, it's, to be honest, it's not that bad in Scala. Going between Rust and C slash C++ is going to be a little more of a stretch for me personally, because I just don't, I haven't written that much C in my in my career. Um, and in fact, I, I like to joke that I've written and read more C since I started working with Rust than I ever had before. And that's actually true. Um, yeah, FFI is a hell of a drug. Being able to call out to, uh, to C APIs from a Rust program is pretty cool, but it took a lot of research for me to get there. Uh, unfortunately, that was my first Rust program, so I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, so anyway, they uh, they have they have some example an example windows here, and I'm, I'm going to run this this thing because it's like a kitchen sink uh, a kitchen sink program. So it's got a, a little accordion in here um, with a bunch of different widgets. This is just kind of like doing a showcase. Uh, so they're they're rendering some some curved data over time. They're uh, swinging some progress bars back and forth. We've got examples of different widget layouts, I think. Um, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Scrollable region, okay. Groups. I don't know what a lot of this is yet. Um, this being my first look. Uh, but I... I feel like because of the documentation situation, I'm going to be referring to this, uh, this kitchen sink program a lot. Um, so while I'm getting started, I've basically opened it up in my editor since I have all the source code here. Um, and we'll see that this is the main entry point for, uh, for the program. 
which looks like it's just kind of doing some minor setup and then delegating to this uh, this other thing. Where is it? Test window implementation. Um, is that right? I don't actually see where that happens. But I do know that And pardon me. I'm going to switch back to uh, solarized light here. My poor little dyslexic eyes are struggling with the uh, high contrast. Um, so I'm on support. This is the uh, the windowing system. So support run. So let's look at that. Oh, here we go. So this must be just general reuse stuff. I thought this was like where the window was being built. But this looks like, oh, this is a lot of the content. Okay. So I will need to go back there, but. But I bet that the content is brought in here somewhere. calling me a liar again. I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading. And this is, uh, well, uh, I may not be lying, but what I assumed was happening here doesn't appear to be. I don't see any imports for, uh, for that file anywhere. And it may be downstream of something that's, so I guess if I wanted to walk the dependency graph, right, this thing doesn't import anything other than uh, I am GUI's library code and uh, some time code from the standard library. But where's the meat? Where does the meat happen? Um, in fact, what I could do Test window and pool. I feel like one of these files needs to bring that in somewhere. Oh. Wait, what? Okay, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. I'm, uh, I was reading it wrong. So, so if I quit that out, that's actually a, an entirely separate, um, example. That's a, that's a whole main all on its own. which is interesting. This one seems much smaller. Or maybe not. So with that in mind, 
close this out. I'll go back to test window. So maybe, oh, you know what? I get it. I get it now. So show test window is actually delegating to the library itself. Image GUI show test window. This is a this is a thing that the library itself has built into it. Here's the test window. Um, and so test window impl is kind of like a, I guess it's a cut down version, just probably because it was a pain in the ass to put together. Um, oh, and look at that file menu state. I want to run this again. No, that doesn't that doesn't do anything, but I'm very interested in that. Okay. So this is uh, like a, a re-implementation of some of the content so that you can see what it would have been like if it wasn't implemented in C, but it was instead implemented in Rust. So that's really valuable, actually. Um, because now I can kind of compare one-to-one -one, like what the C version looks like and what the Rust version looks like and kind of get a gist for, uh, for what the conversion is like. Um, so A+, plus. thanks. What, what, is, what is this guy's name? Gecko, I think. What's your handle? Gek, Gekio with an IO? Okay. Thanks, my man. Um, all right, so that's what we got, um, and I guess it's so now that I've gone through all of that, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start a brand new project, um, in two, two places, I guess, um, but what the fuck is GitHub Marketplace. This is the kind of stuff I ignore when I don't have uh, huge fonts going on. Seems new. Um, I don't GitHub enough, evidently. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just drop a new. Uh, new project in here and I'm gonna just call it clip viewer mm. so I'm gonna uh, reference my other project here um, and I'm not gonna add anything to it by default okay huge font causing me problems all over I guess I don't want to do that I want to uh, cargo in it because rust is awesome um, a bin and I'm going to call it uh, Omen Clip Viewer. Right? And it has already initialized a repo for me here and added a git ignore, uh, a cargo.toml, and uh, I think there's a. Can I cat in PowerShell? Yes. There's a little main .rs, okay. Got PowerShell, you suck so much ass. Oh God. I hate you.
Okay, so, oh yeah. I gotta track the upstream. My bottle is all, uh, all sweaty. I got too much, uh, cold water in there, thanks to all that ice. It's just dripping all over me. Um... Okay. So there we go. We got a uh, we got a basic um, a basic Rust program ready to go. Nothing cool going on there yet. But uh, so the first thing I'm going to do to my new project is um, open it up in my editor. I'm going to do this in a new window so that I can flip back and forth between it and the uh, the example the example programs from uh, I am GUI so there's our uh, our main and here's where we uh, list out our dependencies and that's where this goes blam uh, nope don't want that Thank you. But that tells me that I need to uh, review my git ignores. So uh, since I'm using an IDE, the IDE is going to be tracking a bunch of my, my uh, project configuration on disk. So uh, I'm going to add an idea directory. Um, what else? I guess star.iml, which is... Uh, module files I don't have any extra modules set up here but I just want to make sure they're they're blanked out um, I also want to uh, what do I want swap and uh, I think Vim on Windows does some weird thing where it like puts a tilde on the end I don't know what the deal is with that. Um, so, like, if I if I vim my git ignore, and then close it, I don't know when it generates those files. Maybe it's like uh, nope. I don't know. Speculation. Um, oh, right, yeah, I guess, I guess because this is binary and not a library, I can uh, add my cargo.lock, which is kind of a good practice. So the cargo.lock file, the idea is if you, uh, if you have kind of a, a wide open or, or somewhat permissive version spec in your cargo.toml, um, it's, it's, uh, it's possible that, let's look at this. So, so when I specify I am GUI here at 0.0.15, it means that only 0.0.15 can be installed. If I were to shorten that to 0.0, uh, it's basically the equivalent of saying 0.0.star. So anything that matches that that's, uh, that last digit uh, will be acceptable. And so that can change over time. Um, but uh, with the cargo.lock, basically it records whatever the version is um, that you install when you install it. And, uh, and so that becomes like the blessed version until you do a cargo update which will try to find newer versions of all the packages that you have specified uh, in a way that would permit newer versions to be installed so it, i mean it's a little complicated but the gist is it lets you have a little extra stability on top of being permissive 
over time. It's a it's a developer quality of life thing. Um, oh, and the reason I brought up the the difference between binaries and libraries is with libraries, you really don't want to specify a lock file. You don't want you don't want to have one because. Uh, the consumers of your library will have their own lock file or not. It's not really up to you, is the thing. Um, so it's a it's a different different situation. So uh, let's see. So there's our dependency. And so now, um, I guess I'm just gonna take a look at the example that they have in the readme here, which is the, uh, this is like the, the mouse tracker. Yeah. So I need a, I need a macro use here, I think. Since we've got this um, I am string macro. Um, so I need to tell the compiler that when I bring this this crate in, it's got macros to, to add to my global global scope. Um, I wish there were Rust doc for this, but that is uh, one of the important but unimplemented things. So that's gonna suck. But instead, <clears throat> to learn where, uh, where UI comes from, I guess, uh, which one of these do I wanna look at? I guess I want the impl. So where does UI come from? Oh, I see. Uh, interesting. This is part of a closure. So, uh, so I guess I also need a, um, a support run just kind of cobbling this together uh, wrong language fn build win ui ui is a reference to ui with a lifetime of the calling scope. Oops. And hopefully I'll be able to kind of shake out more questions uh, once we get this kind of compiling. So support, support is interesting. It's kind of, uh, there's a lot of boilerplate here, I guess, that I'm gonna have to learn more about. But for right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take it. I'm gonna take it and then I'm gonna examine it later and, and learn what I can. Uh, 
I don't generally like to work this way, but this is a lot. Like, there's a lot here. Um, and so part of that is I'm going to have to uh, even look at the dependencies for the example program. Let's see. So the example programs operate in two modes. There's GFX and then there's gluten, I guess. And so these are kind of, uh, or, or GL, GLIM. Um, gluten is a windowing system. I believe it's pure rust. Um, so that's what gets you the application window. Um, GLIM, however you pronounce that, is, uh, I believe that's an OpenGL implementation. Um, which will work with gluten. Um, and what else? GFX is, uh, interesting. And that's kind of what my game code is using. Um, but this is a, a graphics API, a low-level graphics API that uh, has kind of pluggable backends. So you can do OpenGL or DirectX, I guess, in some cases, or maybe Metal, which I think is the one of the OSX or is that iOS related? I'm not sure. Uh, but the big thing that's kind of pending in that space is um, Vulkan, which is, uh, I don't know, I guess going to supersede OpenGL at some point. It's a new, new graphic standard. Um, so let's see. I wonder, I wonder how to approach this. So this is bringing in... Um, I think I need to get these myself from Crates.io. I really need some docs up in here. So this is going to be a struggle. Um, so let's see what else we have in the matches uh okay right so here's the individual renderers um so i'm gonna grab the gilliam renderer i want to call it gilliam i i know that's not what it is but i'm going to i'm going to shorten that out um, so this is interesting because I feel like I feel like this package should depend on should depend on uh, I am GUI sys. It does. So I shouldn't need to specify this directly. Okay. Um, all right. So So this is the uh, this is the crate I need to add to my main. To enable the renderer and I guess now is maybe not too early to try and uh, cargo check see where all the all the compiler errors are coming from because I 
feel like the dependency should be there based on my assumed dependency graph. Like this guy should depend on 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 Gillum. And uh, this one should depend on the sys crate. And let's see, what else? Not found in scope, not found in scope. That all sounds okay. So part of that is because I took, uh, I took the example from the readme and uh, tried to run it like it was the, uh, the example from the examples project um, so I guess if I if I really wanted to and I don't really want to but I could uh, I could take this big example and move it on over but I don't think I want to do that. I think I want to uh, let's see. First of all, I want to see where the imports are For this uh, this main, so it's it's using I am GUI star, which I don't like. But let's see, maybe I can get some prompts out of this. Um, so like UI would be a good one to have. Um, oh, I need, uh, I need a mod support so that it can, uh, there we go. So it can know things about support run. Um, and show test window is, uh, is the thing that requires state that isn't defined here. So I'm going to. Uh, I guess I'm going to redefine it here. And I don't need any of that. I just need the UI instance. I'll rerun my checks. So I've still got a lot of stuff that's not found. Most of this is over in support. It's kind of interesting. So, nice input. Where does that live? Okay. So I should have some errors related to these use. Yeah, unresolved import. Unresolved import. Because uh, because of Gilliam, and so I don't know if the uh, the renderer crate that we're bringing in. There's the possibility that it's it's going to republish its own dependency. Did 
Did I get that backwards? I U M. I U M. Okay. Um. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes crates can republish the crates that they depend on, so that you can just use whatever version they have specified. Um, but it doesn't look like that's the case here. So I need to uh, I need to get a, a version that will work. And what I can hopefully do is I can see here's here's the dependencies for this. So yeah. I can bring that over. Again, I'm shortening because everything that's in that last digit range should uh, should be compatible with each other unless Unless someone makes a big mistake. So now when I run cargo check, it's going to uh, pull down new dependencies because I changed my my cargo dot toml. Okay, so we've got far fewer uh, errors this time. So that's uh, that's pretty good. Oh right, so I had rewritten I had rewritten that um, that import instead of using import star, I imported UI. But it looks like there are some other symbols in here that we need. Maybe not. Maybe not a whole bunch, but clear color is undoubtedly one of them. And this other one, what is this? I am GUI set cond first. Oh, this is like a, an if def. This is some kind of a guard check. Cond, yeah, look at that. Interesting. No clear color in the root. So I'll go back and uh, oh, clear color is a constant defined in here. Well, I guess I will uh, just go ahead and borrow that. Yep, that's uh, not needed. It was complaining that I, I had a mutable, a mutable boolean here that wasn't changing, and uh, that's true, I guess. But now it's uh, it's literally true. So oh, so hopefully I don't uh, like crash my shit here but I'm gonna I'm gonna do cargo run <coughs> so that um that original show test window I think it was using that flag that uh, that mutable boolean to 
to know when to exit this. I think this is a loop. Support run, yeah, so, so this loop would run forever, or at least it would run until this becomes true. And so I think show test window was taking immutable reference to that variable and it would be able to decide if open was true or not. Um, but we're going to gamble. We're going to gamble that this thing knows how to kill itself. And uh, if it doesn't, then I'll have to take extreme measures, I guess. So assuming this works, I don't know that it will. Um, the next step for me is going to be to uh, basically do a lot more research and figure out exactly which widgets I'm going to need for, uh, for the application I want to build. I know that I want a, uh, an image viewer um, that should be scalable. So there should be support for mouse wheel interaction there. Um, I know that I want a list view of uh, clip names, which will be read from the file. Okay. All right. So there's a... This thing is... Oh. Okay. Double click will uh, collapse and open and it's reporting my mouse position only while the mouse is inside the app so these are uh, relative units based on the viewport I guess zero zero yeah good all right cool does this resize yes it does Okay, so I guess that's success. Um, I'm gonna try and close it now. Yeah, that seemed to work. Good deal. Um, oh, what is that? There's a I am GUI any over here. Hmm. I think that's uh, it's doing something with window geometry. Um, I'm going to add it to my git ignore for right now. I don't know that that's uh, something I want to keep around. So I'm just going to add that in there. And I'll think about it when I know a little bit more about how it works. Um, so I want both the cargo files, the lock, and the toml. I want uh, the stolen Rust sources. I just borrowed that code from those other projects, but uh, yeah, we will. Uh, We'll study the crap out of this in isolation um, and see what we can learn about, about the setup. So the support stuff is all like uh, window event handling. Um, so that gets us uh, listening for keys, listening for mouse interactions, all this stuff. This is the, the entire eventing system. Um, configure keys so it's mapping it's mapping keys to numbers I don't understand what good the numbers are more research required okay um, update mouse yeah this is uh, this is gonna take a lot of reading So 
so. There's a quit flag here, which is different than the open. All right. All right. So I guess before I uh, before I commit this stuff, I'm going to uh, cargo plus nightly because I I updated my tool chain before I uh, before I started the stream. I'm going to cargo plus nightly update first format nightly. Is that not? I guess I do install. It already exists. I need to force. Yeah, so basically anytime I update my, uh, my nightly tool chain, I think I need to refresh the the nightly crates that provide binaries in order to get them running again. So this is a little little routine. I don't update my tool chain all the time. So it's not a huge burden, but something you gotta do. Uh, and the main thing that I'm I'm looking for here is just to reformat my sources before I commit. Um, especially considering I've got a bunch of source that I didn't write myself. So I don't know what kind of shape it's in. It could be that they went through this same process already and so it's not going to be any different. But. Just waiting on cargo. It's amazing that this stuff uh, works as well as it does considering it they're not even zero one zero yet. Um, it's kind of startling to see 0.0 in my requirements. Rust format is taking a while. What is up with that? Should uh, check my Twitter while I wait. So, um, with, uh, with Rust Format Nightly installed, I should be able to uh, cargo plus Nightly uh, format. Any change? Yeah, we got some different stuff. Okay. So, it's, uh, it's line breaking for me, which is nice. It's reordering my uh, my imports. Also nice. Um, what is going on with this terminal? Jiggling around. Weird. Um, what happened there with the control stuff? I guess it just did a bunch of line breaks all over the place there. 
so that all looks like it was in support yeah doing line breaks all right that'll work There we go. Pushing code. And yeah, so uh, so like I was saying, next steps for me is going to just be a bunch more research. I'm going to try and narrow the scope. Uh, so I'm going to evaluate uh, all the different widgets that are available. Um, and then learn how to use them real good, I guess. Uh, and then after that, um, I'll try and do some file reading, right? So reading the uh, the metadata file and then parsing that out and making sure that uh, I can update the UI just to know which which uh, clip is the active one. Um, and then after that, I'll worry about animation playback, um, which is going to mean learning about how to display images, uh, how to hopefully render the, uh, the frames in a scalable, zoomable panel of some kind. Um, yep, there's a lot to learn here, a lot to, a lot to figure out, uh, but uh, hopefully, hopefully it won't be too bad. The project has a pretty tight scope so uh, I think everything except for the file browser aspect is going to be pretty achievable pretty, pretty quickly. So uh, thanks for watching and um, hopefully I'll see you next time as I, uh, as I start to work through these, uh, these bigger parts. Nice.